Hello, hello. We are back. And this week we have Dan Allegra. Did I say that right? Yeah. From you. the Rewind VHS Grading Company. We're going to ask him some questions, but let me roll this intro. <laughs> I'm so excited to have you. Oh, thanks for having me. I'm I'm just really excited to talk collectibles anytime I can. So hell yeah. To me, this is a... this is fun. Of course, we have our uh resident Pablo. Hi, everybody. Good to see you, Dan. <laughs> Pablo. But I know I've known Pablo for a long time, actually. That's the, the yeah. trick to it all is actually Pablo, how many years? I mean, Probably at least years. five six. years ago. It was yeah, one of our five, six. Yeah. We, we were doing back. comics, Maya. This is a comic book connection with, with Dan. We had so much fun. He loves those Golden Age beauties. <laughs> Me too. Um, and it was yeah, the, the best five years of my life. I, I'm not want to overhype it, but I, I owe it to comics, you know. And I met some wonderful people and, uh, you know, with Dan and, and many other guys. Well, the Everybody great thing is Pablo with pablo is like he connects communities together like he he's the glue between it and that he's part of that that journey that uh you know you could go and collect other things at different parts but you know sometimes you run into pablo collecting this or that but like you know you never you know he's he's there you know and it's great yeah i feel like once you uh if you have the collector spirit it kind of spans across several categories so <laughs> yes yes uh, it never stops and it, you know some, i always say it's like seasons you know you you know sometimes you go away from one uh, collectible go to another or just you know life happens and you come go away from collecting but it's always there and uh, you go back you see the people you haven't seen in a while and it's great for sure for sure so i want to ask you i'll jump right in and um Let's just start with what got you into collecting VHS? Ooh, collecting VHS. You know, it was funny. I had a friend, Jeremy Smith, about two years ago, and he was talking. He's been a many. He's been collecting for, I don't know, a decade. I'd be guessing here. But he was talking about how he's like, wow, they're starting to really, you know, start up. You know, people are starting to recognize how great, you know, these VHS tapes are. He's looking at price. And I was looking, I'm like, yeah, I get it, you know, and. My hard thing at the time was I didn't have the bandwidth to, I had so much on my plate besides work, family, kids. Um, but I was I was working on a project um, with encapsulations and I go, here, I go, let me try to make an encapsulation. Cause I, I heard about the other grading companies at that time. I was like, let me see if I could do something. And one thing led to another and that led this journey of starting Rewind Grading Company. And it's been a it's been the longest journey ever but it started then and my big thing was i could have gone more into getting a big collection but i didn't want to amass a big collection people think hey he's trying to just start a company to sell off his collectibles so i've actually started collecting more in the last six months to make sure that like a lot of cibs i mean i do get sealed but you know that whole time learning and uh meeting great people along the way for so sure, I feel like uh, half of the fun of it is just learning all of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 100%. So you, when you say CIB for the viewers or the listener, what what does that mean, Dan? Sorry, CIB is uh, a lot of people call it complete in box. I actually don't even like the term, but it's I'm so used to saying it because of video games. But uh, open box and open box, um, you know, that's something that uh, I've been enjoying. You know, I bought a Halloween meta and. Bought a few other tapes that I'm just like, hey, I, I want this in my collection. And, you know, I collect many different things. So I'm very picky of what stays in my my private collection that really is like very tight in a way because I collect seven different things usually. So um, it's been a lot of fun to, you know, go down these rabbit holes and learn every little bit that we can. And every day we're learning so that it never stops. Like the learning aspect never stops. And don't get me wrong, like as much as I think we've known we put 40 hours a week in for, for a long, long time, uh, you never stop learning. And we have so much more to learn. So that you your company will be grading seal VHS and also CIB. So opening the box will be also encapsulated. Correct. Right now we uh we just launched on Tuesday, and it's uh for people that know it's called rewindgrading.com. Um we launched on Tuesday, we launched with slip sleeve VHS uh and beta. And let me get two of them here. So uh, here's our beta case. Nice. And if um, 
Let me see real quick. Let me show a better beta. Well, not better, but, you know, a smaller box one. So you see how it hovers. Oh, Maya has a, a lot of betas. Oh, uh, beta is so cool. I mean, yeah, they're so cool. cute. I like little every stuff. Person, my, every person in our office, because we have a full staff, uh, there's uh, quite a few of us, and every person, people that never even collected before, was like, I want that. When we first got a beta in and put it in encapsulation, they're like, we want it. And you'll tell betas right here, it says beta. VHS, a little bit different, it says VHS up here. Oops, sorry, right there. So right away, your eye can see, hey, is this a VHS or beta? Because we know you're looking through eBay, right? You're looking through your auction house, and you get mixed up, and that happens. So we try to make stuff like that easy. Being you know, a collector myself for 30 years, I, I find it important to make it how I'd want it. So you know, little things like, hey, on the side, you get the grade and the title. So you could stack these sideways you know, on your shelf, and they look beautiful. So... Um, you know, it was a lot of fun to go through this and try to make the label that we thought was best for, you know, everyone. And, uh, to wrap up the question right there, uh, we are, we will be doing open box, um, sooner than later. We wanted to get through the initial rush of sealed, but we believe everyone should be able to enjoy these, um, uh, our encapsulation. So we will be, um, opening up open, um, boxes, we call it for submissions in the near future. We just want to make sure that we're prepared and that we don't create a backlog by allowing everything at once. So. I'm just trying to see yeah. if I can share my screen here of mm -hmm. your website. Here we go. Oh, nice. okay. So if you come up on their website here, Rewind Grading, and you sign up for an account, you can select what type it is. And then it'll tell you all the prices and the turnaround, which is super convenient. Um, and I think 55 is the cheapest that, that you can have something graded right now. How is how, how is that a 75 turnaround and then $75 mm -hmm. for 25 days and then 125 for five day turnaround, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. And, yeah. Uh, and then the options here, but no CIB yet, but will be coming. So that's cool. <laughs> we got to change the name too. It's funny because there's just so much, uh, so much coming in the upcoming weeks. Do I see cassette? Oh, the well, we actually will be doing music. That that's supposed to say tape right there. I'm a little embarrassed, but um, <laughs> but no. Eventually, what's going to happen? We're going to do a horizontal case, and we're going to do it where the the floating like two tone tape. And uh, eventually, we'll do tape only. So people that just want to you know encapsulate their favorite movie without the sleeve, because sometimes hey, you know what? A Halloween meta is expensive, but you have the tape. We want you to be able to encapsulate that too, and. You know, our goal really is not just um, to, you know, we try to do it as cheap as possible so as many people can enjoy it as possible. We try to, I think we're the cheapest on the market on purpose, like, and the quickest at the same time, too. And that that's by design. You know, it really is important to us that, you know, someone that's working 40 hours a week, they don't have to break the bank just to enjoy the hobby. Yeah, right now, uh, I think IGS is their cheapest is 65 and it's uh, like it's over 100 days turnaround. Mm. So and then I don't know about Beckett, but I, I think theirs is still like 75 for over a month and they have some kind of express, but I don't know what the price of that is. So you guys, as far as I'm, I don't know about VGA. That's the only one I, I haven't checked on because oh, I've it never takes said a long time. It. But <laughs> uh, I, like VGA. I don't it's know what their price is. You know, I don't talk negative about competition because I, I think you know, a lot of companies bring innovation over time. And uh, VGA I use for video games. Actually, I have one. Let me grab one right here. I'm, I'm a collector. So this is uh, Mario Paint. And they're the only company that really grades these big ones. So um, I actually like uh, Chad and company over there. Great people. And uh, they do a good job of uh, their acrylic cases. So, um, you know, obviously, I think uh, what we do and stuff like that is... Um, Obviously, if I, I it's the best because I wouldn't do it if I didn't think we could do the best job. But um, the other companies do a great job, for sure. So the the, the sizes, like, because uh, that's I was talking with Maya and Danny and, and Mikey, like the sleep cases. That's the that's the one size, and then the Betamax, uh, and then you got the clamshells, and then you got the big boxes. Do you have cases for all of those? We have cases for all of them, but right now we only could do the slip cases for beta and, um, you know, um, VHS. We do have everything 
coming to market. When I say that, uh, the next molds that are getting done right now um, are MGM, and then uh, the was it the the drawer boxes, and um, after that, I believe it's Thorn and Clam. But the problem we have right now is not spending the money to make them because we have the actual cases inside. There's a blister that holds these, and that's what gives it the hovering th uh, thing. And we're just waiting for the blister. So we have the encapsulations. We're just waiting for the blisters, and it just takes time to get these things made. And also all these little tweaks that happen between. So we're hoping by, I don't, I shouldn't say any date because every time I say it, it doesn't work that way. But um, know that we're going as fast as possible to get the other ones uh, to market as quick as possible. And we will, throughout this year, you're going to see those open up, especially the first two. And oh, oh, I think lost. we lost him. We lost. Oh, so here's now. Carter, too. Carter. Carter. Carter just popped in. <laughs> Carter. So, muted too. Carter. so now, guys, I'm gonna do a magic trick. I'm gonna get my uh, no. I'm there he is. There he is. Hey, I don't know what happened. It's just it's like, a magic, magic oh, show. Okay. So, any which way? Yes, we're we're gonna be coming up to market within the first half of the year. Have other um other parts. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, so what do you think that good advice or guidelines are for someone who wants to get into the hobby as far as like buying what they like but also buying on the side of investment like not paying too much for something they like i have, I have a few because again like i really have been in collectibles my whole life and especially at a, a very um how do i say very you know buying what i love and not you know flipping the extra stuff and such um I think that the main thing is being patient because a lot of people come in and they see one thing on the marker and finally the one item comes up and they, they get in a bidding war. But then like a month later, the second item comes up and they, that item goes for way less sometimes. So I think patience and, you know, really understanding what, what you're buying, what variant is really important because sometimes um, people get ahead of themselves and not realizing they're buying a third print and why the first print went for the price it went um as a you know as a collector you constantly have to know why it's going for that price you know and you at one point should understand where it's going to actually end before it even ends that's that's pretty typical and like today is the heritage auction for video games and you know it's pretty much in line of where you would guess on a lot of the prices and uh you know if stuff falls through then you you know someone like myself who loves buying uh video games i, I step in when i think things are past those levels yeah, so that's a, for example, like we were talking about the, the Pulp Fiction. Like if somebody sends you the first release versus somebody wants to create the collector's edition, which is not value, it's really common. You guys pay attention to that stuff or do you tell the customer like this is not a good tape to grade or is that's not your job? We, we don't, this just happened actually uh, less than a week ago. Someone had uh, some Star Wars tapes, they were referred over to us from an auction house and very nice person. And they thought they had $60,000 in tapes, I think it was. And I wasn't in the office when they got the phone call from the person. And no. I said, I, I told them, I go, Hey, you know, if and it was, I believe it was a 95, I, you, you know, go. we try, yeah. we try not to, um, step in and go like burst bubbles, but I did tell my, the team, I go, if that person tries to value them, because after a thousand dollars, we charge a two percent fee on for to make sure we could cover the insurance and such. I said, "Hey, if that person tries to value it over a thousand, you know, tell them, hey, you know, we don't, we're very much, you know, we try not to get the hard thing is we we do everything possible not to get into values as a grading company because that's not our job. Our job is to make sure that we provide a service, but we do try to protect the clients at all cost and." Uh, you know, when you go to declare a value of an item, you choose. Not we're not going to, you know, be like, no, nope, we want more money or something like that. So we let the client choose the amount of money. But if they if they do something like that, we will reach out to them. The person valued it under a thousand at the end of the day, and I was very, you know, we was we were like not going to allow that to happen. All right, so Carter is here. I don't know if he can he can. I don't. Know, he has an issue with the microphone or something. I'm good. Hey, I was gonna say I didn't read my key as a self muted. So um, it's it's fun to bust bubbles. 
<laughs> yeah, no, it's not though. <laughs> sure. well, one no, of the things not, that but... I wanted to ask you that I've seen other grading companies do, I think mainly um, IGS, which has caused some confusion. And I know it has with a lot of people because they send me screenshots and they ask me like, what the, what's the deal with this? Because on a lot of tapes, they'll put first of 1985, even though the first print of a tape came out in 1983. So as far as like first prints goes, do you guys mark that on there? Or do you just clearly put like, this is the date that this year was, this was printed. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> well, we're very careful about that. that. That was actually why one of the reasons I actually started this was I saw the companies out there and I thought when I looked at it and there's nothing against those two companies, I did not think they were doing an adequate job to serve the community. I really looked at stuff like release date, a theatrical release date on the front. I'm like, Personally, I think that's wrong. People are going to confuse that thinking that's the year the tape came out. So the front of the label, what we do is we, I don't know how much I can, you can see up down here. It'll say box here and it's be the latest date on the box. Now we don't put first print and stuff like that because once you put it on the front of the label, it never can go back. You can never stop be like, Hey, wait a second. We want to change that. And as confident as we are, and we have so much great information that's like, hey, this is probably between 83 to 84. We we can't put that on the label because maybe we miss a typo on the – there's a typo we found out that makes one print f uh, ahead of another one that maybe it makes it second print, and then we can never go backwards. So we kind of take the road of – we give you all the information. We try to – you know, we're going to put out a lot of knowledge through articles and timelines um, on our site and newsletter – but on the label, we don't put first print. And we're very careful about when we put a date, you know, what the date is and why it's there. Because something like theatrical date, we put it on the back uh, most of the time just because we don't want people to get confused. Like, hey, Star Wars 1977. No, I mean, first one, as you guys know, come, came out in 82. So it, it, we try to make it less confusing that way. Yeah. Okay. I like that. I like hey, that. I, got a qu I got a question. Um, now, when it comes to collecting... Um, it's all about uh, appealing to the normie. And, and now when I see labels from other grading companies, like there's a ton of abbreviations. Um, mm -hmm. There's like a no ISBN, a white WM and all this kind of stuff. Now for the hardcore collector, they're going to push through that and they're going to find out what that means. But, uh, and I know there's like, you know, just a, just so much real estate on a label, but at the same time, it, it really has to appeal to somebody that is just, they may be apt to collecting, but then they look at, you know, all these abbreviations and they're just going to be turned off and they're just going to go, eh, you know, maybe some other time. <laughs> so, no, I um, that. yeah, how do you, how, how, how are you going to remedy that, something like that? No, number or one thing you? is, is really it's it's a hard it's a hard mix because you know like sports cards they just put the title of the player the year and it's very well known but the problem is these movies they came out say so or in 82 and probably got printed into the 2000s you know or such or like you know at least 95 and then so on so like you have to kind of describe those little things to make it known which varied in this and sometimes like you like you know you have to abbreviate so we did do our best to abbreviate as little as possible, but also on our site, you're going to see a revamp in about a month. I, I'm not supposed to say that, but we have a 2.0 of the website already coming out and you're going to notice some stuff like we're going to have a glossary where you can see what every abbreviation means. And um, like ours right here, mostly it's tough because you do want to just put the title. I would love to just put the title in the year, you know, and be done and make it very clean. But we do think for um, to find the middle ground, it's to put, the front label I look at is uh, a date stamp. If you know what you're looking for, you can pretty much you can tell what year it, you know that tape should be by what's on the front. So we try to on the front label is as little as information as we feel that's needed, but also enough that you can figure out what year that tape came out. And it, it's a tricky it's a tricky thing. And it really took me months to design our label. So it was clear everything on the front had a reason to be there, and you know it took time but i feel like we did a good job you know and um another thing i could show so over here it's hard to see but it says box tape seal and that's where we put that information so each one is very distinct 
So if you're looking for the box information, we, we broke it down so you can you can be like, okay, this is the box variance, this is the seal variance, tape variance, and um, you know, what type of tape, if it's a scotch, is it a two-tone, you know, uh, the weight of it, you know, it, it's very important. So, you know, it, it, tapes are tricky. It's it's much trickier than I think most collectibles. I've been in many collectibles, and it's one of the most trickiest thing to know the exact variant. So, um, yeah, it, hope that answers it. If not, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, yeah. so we're, we were talking about your cases here, and I was going to ask you how your cases are different from the other companies, but I see what you just showed there. It looks like it has like a rounded edge on it. Oh, yeah. These are injection molding. These are legit. Wow, um, that's so, I like that already. The rounded. Yes, of it. this is this is professionally designed. This is why it took us eighteen months. Is a lot of companies deal in acrylic, right? And acrylics a lot. What you'll see is it's glued. You can manually make it that day. These we had to design professionally, and we have. Um, let me get one of the betas here. I'll get my raging bowl out. Um, there's a blister inside, and basically it hovers. And this is to protect it. This is made out of polycarbonate. This is a very, very, very strong. Um, and yeah, no, we did the label to be kind of hovering there too. We tried some stuff that other grading companies, not just in VHS, but all of collecting, we've never tried. And I love trying to push push it a little bit further for collecting because I'm a student of all these collectible markets. So, you know, I looked at what they're doing in cards, what they're doing in coins, and try to bring all that to VHS. And that's where, you know, this case, you know, is is a really a labor of love of really trying to work with some of the best people. And, you know, I couldn't have done this alone, of course. But the good thing at the end of the day is it's a beautiful product. And honestly, you have this on your shelf. I'm not trying to be a salesperson here. <laughs> it's freaking cool. It, 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 I want to put one of these in each one of your guys' hands because this thing feels better than it even looks. I know um, it looks pretty cool, but it's he it's it's not overly heavy, but it's it's polycarbonate, it's thick polycarbonate, and uh, it's really cool, you know. And um, yeah, the, the other thing I want to mention real quick is the back. The back, we have additional grading notes where, say, if there's a mm. little bit of moisture damage or such, we want to add more details. That's um, good. Also, we have trivia facts where, like, okay, I don't, I haven't read this one, so bear with me. Um, this is Raging Bull. So the trivia fact we put on this one, Robert De Niro and jo Joe Pesci are really punching each other uh other really punchy uh, each other in the famous hit me scene so they're actually actually thrown punches um and then there's another fact and then we do uh by the numbers where we put the budget and the revenue so raging bull 18 million dollar uh budget made 23 million pretty cool nice See, I like that just for the simple fact that, um, you know, other people who come to my house and see my collectibles nonsense, um, you know, like it, it's a good way to start conversation about it when they're like, what's that? I'll be like, actually, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> so yeah. I like that. I'll be like, look I, at this fun fact. I like funny. that a lot. I, I saw Maya, I texted Maya because I saw uh, Frank and Hooker on eBay done by you guys, Rewind. Mm. And I saw that little trivia thing about it was like a two and a half million dollars for Frank and Hooker, and it only made like two hundred thousand, <laughs> so he lost a lot of money. But now it's like a cult classic; like everybody wants Frank and Hooker, and uh, but it's it's good that you put that on the back, you know. So that I, I was talking with Maya about that. It's a lot of fun. We're we're lucky that we get to you know have the time to enjoy these hobbies, but also that we're trying to, you know, get people full time to make it fun for people. Cause you know, that that's at the end of the day, it's not just about, you know, business and stuff, but it's like, Hey, you know, if we can do a positive out there and make this fun, you know, it's, uh, that's what it's about. You know, that's what I've always enjoyed. I've really have collected since I was, you know, very young going to garage sale swap meets with my dad and, you know, I've enjoyed the marketplaces and stuff like that and trying to create a company that I felt best represented everyone. You know, I really, when I saw these, I think of, you know, obviously the collector who has a whole collection with these sideways, you know, no other, I can't say no other grading company. Most grading companies don't have this on the side, even in their new cases. And I just imagine a library view of all of them. And, and even the people that aren't hardcore collectors, like your friends who are like, hey, they like a movie or two. I can imagine two or three of them next to their tv of their favorite movies and they don't have to be expensive movies and that that's you know so important that people can just enjoy it and it doesn't have to be an argument about hey should it be sealed or not or thing it's like 
let people enjoy. If people want to, you know, um, play in the sealed market, we love that, obviously. And we love sealed stuff. I do as a collector. But if someone loves open box and they just want to get their favorite movie encapsulated, we try to make it as cheap as possible with the best quality and, and trying to trying to, you know, satisfy both sides is I think we've we're doing that. That's hey, awesome. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Uh, when it comes to um, research, mm -hmm. say you come across a tape that you know nothing about, something you can't even Google, how how <laughs> how deep, how far are you willing to go? That's actually, I was just, the next question I was going to ask you question. was, who comes up question, with Carter. people there? And uh, if you have well, a team right now, of people, or is it just one person? Or well, we our, our lead researcher is Frank Farina. He's been on here, I believe. Frank is a personal great friend of mine. And uh, he is uh, our lead researcher. Um, Callum is uh, head of operations, and also he goes through with me on authentication. We don't stop, you know, and it's crazy because our database is very, very, very deep now after all this. And uh, really, you know, we call friends of the, if there's ever a stump, you know, we call other people that we have friends in the community. And, you know, luckily a lot of people want to help and they want to see this succeed. So we've luckily been able to, we haven't had a problem with that. And, you know, it's not just an individual effort. You know, there's a lot of people that help us succeed um, if, you know, in this in this community. And it's been really cool to see, you know, it's, um, and those are the people that really, um, you know, I got to take my hats off because it's been a long journey and, you know, it's never, it's sometimes it's not easy, but those are the people that, you know, uh help you through it and you know with the research it's it's quite extensive and luckily you know we uh, frank is top notch top notch guy and uh, i'm really um glad that he's on board with us yeah that's a good question like like, like carter asked because again you cannot possibly know everything it's like with comic books there are comic books that are really obscure and rare but you know the first over street came in 1970 so you got 53 years you know of the hobby VHS is just starting, so it's going to be a lot of research. You know, the companies, not only you, Dan, I mean, um, VGA and, and IGS, they, they, you cannot possibly know everything. That's going to come with time, in my opinion. The main thing to get out there uh, is the, the main title, the, the mainstream, like the Star Wars, the Back to the Futures, because those are the ones that are going to be in my opinion, you know, more collective, like collectors are going to be looking, oh, Back to the Future, Karate Kid, you know, because of the Cobra Kai show. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the, the obscure stuff is going to get there, like Carter say, like you just come across a, a, a movie that, you know, like tells from the Quadet Zone, you know, some some rare horror stuff that there's Cold really fiction widescreen. <laughs> yeah, that you can show to Dan, you know, like, uh, you know, promotional stuff that if you were not in that era, like of the early 80s, you're not, you don't know. So mm -hmm. that's, that's why I think that's a great question by, by Carter. No, that's, it's perfect question, because honestly, uh, never will we know everything. That's just never gonna happen. I don't care anyone on this planet, if, if, you know, you're never gonna know everything. So, you know, being open minded to that and being able to find the best resources. And, yeah. you know, we have a lot of um, ways that we're trying to push knowledge, not just in the community, but with studios and such in time that um, we're really trying to really work on how to get as much knowledge as possible for the community and get it out there. I think the other half of it is getting it out there because we hope to put out as much information as possible. So we want people to like challenge us on, on the information. You know, that's, we're not, we're not gatekeepers. We're not the all end of all this. This is the beginning of VHS and we want to do our part of preserving the tape and putting as much knowledge as possible, but spreading that knowledge through articles and such. And you're going to see, I think we're going to release a magnetic article, hopefully by the end of the first quarter. And that's just going to be, we're going to have a rotation of knowledge that's flowing out there. And that's going to make it more exciting for people to understand. How does someone purchase from someone else a tape for more than a dollar if they don't know what they're buying, right? Right, so, exactly. <laughs> that's the crazy thing to me is like knowledge is everything here. And the knowledge is not out there, at least in my opinion, for VHS. You, to, to learn it, you have to talk to other people. And that's even hard to find people. So that's what we try to tell people on the show all the time. Anything that we talk about, we're like, this is just what we've learned. Like, we might be wrong. <laughs> like, yeah. Give yeah, us a break. Articles, if you know, like, 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 stuff that are very much very user friendly. I've done this in other, 
you know, I was a video game collector for many years and I, I worked on a lot of um, public facing knowledge guides and it was important to me because one thing you get to collaborate with other people, but you get, once you put it out there, it's a living document that you get to update and, you know, people learn from, and then they come to you when they're working on a project. So, you know, I've collected comic books and video games, so it was nice to bring some of the best attributes of these other communities over to VHS and try to help where I can. And again, like, uh, actually not again, but something I find important that, you know, we see a lot of uh, friction sometimes with people that don't collect graded. And I think it's funny because I'm like, you know, we have more alike than not alike. Right. <laughs> and I'm like, you don't have to, like, I'm the first person to say you don't have to get something graded to tell us where, you know, hey, you know what, um, you know, to work on knowledge and to try to, you know, it's a positive, you know, all this is very positive stuff. And, you know, you don't have to get something graded to say, hey, I don't, if you're going to, you know, criticize, criticize something that's a positive, be like, hey, you know, you probably want to think about that timeline there or something like that. You know, we're, we're open-minded to work with everyone and, you know, even, even competition, you know, that's the thing is it's about the overall thing. We hope um, what we do here with our case is everything, you know, steps up the game. So they step up and make us want to do better. And it's not about like trying to corner a market, sell any products. It's about making it just better, you know, every day. So as a new grading service on the market, I think the biggest thing you guys probably face is uh, having people trust you to send sometimes really valuable tapes. And I like that on your website under the submission process, um, that on the third step, you you put that the package is received under video surveillance. Um, yes. That makes me feel a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> well, like so, I said, we've learned from so many that. other companies, you know, we, yeah. we've learned. But yeah, no, we, we have cameras and such, and we make sure that we take, you know, we take photos before and after. And um, we did have a, we, we did a soft launch and some people were like, how does someone have a tape of the day at launch? Well, we had to practice before, so we contacted friends of the company and be like, hey, send 10 tapes in. And uh, it was great because we did learn a lot. And one of the packages actually, it was, a, it was actually Jeremy Smith's package. It had this huge dent. Like, I mean, looked like a forklift, like literally hit the box. And I've never seen that before. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was so scared for him. So uh, we literally filmed opening the box. Like before we opened the box, we're okay, we're going to film this. If there's any damage, we can let him know right away. And luckily, he packaged it really well, but there's no damage. So we are we take precautions like crazy. If we see a huge dent or something, we might even reach out to the buyer and go, hey, this is what we're seeing on the box. Would you like us to open it, you know, before we do? Because we, we have no incentive to screw anyone over. You know, our thing's the long game of doing right by every customer, you know, and um, we always say, if there's a problem, we're going to step up, we're going to fix it. And, sure. you know, it's important that we take photos. Um, we get it right. And if someone has a, if we make a small mistake, we're going to make mistakes. We're going to fix it. You know, so, so. listen, listen, mm -hmm. people, listen, the viewers on, the, you better pack those things tight. A lot of bubble wrap guys. <laughs> double box. I always, you know, I personally always double box. It, it does me well. Um, I always try to say, think of that, um, project from junior high school where you drop the egg from the building and you make a package you have an egg in there and then if can you make it not explode once it hits the ground mm -hmm. um i don't know if you guys had that but i always think about when i ship my items and you like like pablo said you can't use enough bubble wrap uh, i always <laughs> like to double box and i always try to think of hey if this thing i always assume someone's gonna punt it like someone is someone's gonna punt it so <laughs> um but you know the good thing is we do um open it up right away typically within 24 hours we check in the item if we check it in you know if we you know if there's ever something like hey maybe this got damaged we will reach out so um it's very important that um you know we make sure that we receive the items check them in and get them through the process yeah i oh, like that sorry. i like that there's a up you know that you guys give updates on the process um yeah. through your account because you know i i like igs and that's where i've submitted all my tapes from and they got them back to me really quick so i don't want to sound like i'm i'm talking negatively about that experience because for me it was really positive but the one thing that i i didn't like was that you send them off and then it's just kind of a mystery until they show back up you know what i mean like you might get an email like hey they're on their way but i'm like for people who submit something that's 
you know, longer than 30 days because mine was less than 30 days. So no big deal. But if it's going to be longer than that, I would be anxious to not have any updates at all. So I really like that, that you guys have uh, that on your website, that you get updates for that. So yeah. are you uh, taking the CGC model of kind of just kind of doing like a step by like just updating as things progress is that is that what's going on yeah you know you um in your account i am trying to think of each step but there's uh it's been checked in it's been photographed uh it goes through authentication goes through grading um and uh goes through encapsulation and then it gets shipped out and i think all those are on the back end that you can see i know you get a, you're at least supposed to get an email notification when it ships with your fedex number um and yeah, I mean, mo everything there is pretty, you know, um, should all be shown on the back end of your site. And we, we are working with uh, the design to, again, I mentioned that we're, we're going to be having a 2.0 of the site in the future, in the short future. And uh, it should look a, a little bit more user friendly because um, not everything got done by launch date. That, but everything does work on the back end and you could see your upgraded process. And it's important that like I... I've gone through every grading company, right? I've, I've literally used CGC, I've used VG, I've used, well, I have not used IGS, nothing against them, I just haven't, but um, I've used pretty much every comic book company. I use CBCS um, and I try to take what I like from all of them and, and add it here, you know, cause I'm a client too, to, to, I love grading. I absolutely love grading. I love the dopamine hits. Like you, you ship it off, you get the checked in thing. You're like, <laughs> you know, I don't know if I'm gonna curse, but hell yeah, you know? And then like, you know, it gets like engraved, you're like, oh, come on, show me the grade, show me the yeah. grade. And then like, you know, you get the grade, oh, hell yeah. And then it gets shipped and then you open it, it's like Christmas. And, you know, we're just trying to make that process, um, you know, make it how I would want it, you know? And that's that's why I say it's a labor of love. You know, it's, it's not easy to, um, I, this is a thousand times harder than I thought it would be to get to this point, but we couldn't be happier because um, the people that have used it, you know, had such positive things and, you know, it's really to hear something like, you know, enjoying, you know, things you like about it. But we always say, let us know if you don't, you find something like, I wish it was like this. You know, I can't say we always, we can make every change to every user, but I'm listening. Even, you know, the thing is we hear every part of, um, you know, um, criticism. And, you know, when we can make a change and we have made multiple changes since the soft launch because of people that go, Hey, have you thought about this? And we take it in consideration a lot and we have made tons of changes. So don't hesitate to reach out and let us know that we suck. Just so you, you mentioned a, an authentication team. So the other thing I think, you know, with this grading thing, obviously, if you have a, if you have a good uh, casing for it and you have a team of people working on the information, the only other thing I think is authenticating the watermarks. Yes. So as far as seals and watermarks, how do you guys, have you ever come across anything that didn't look legit? And like, I know with IGS, I actually sent them a tape and they were like, we can't authenticate this and they sent it back. So yes. what do you have to say about any of that? Yeah, we've, yeah. we've rejected tapes. We, we've rejected quite a few already. Um, and, you know, we don't, if I always say, if we're on the fence of like, you know, we're going to be on the safety side, you know, but we've found that uh, we've been able to definitely tell definitively when we have so far, which has been nice. Um, and there's a lot of techniques, you know, you got to watch out and there's some really good fake watermarks out there, unfortunately. And uh, we look at it many different ways from, you know, under a microscope is, you know, we make sure to we take actually we take photos of a lot of the stuff under magnification. It's actually a cool thing. You actually have the uh, that you can actually take photos of the it all zoomed in and we make files wow. of it. That's and awesome. um, it changes by year and such. So we're really trying to make a database that really is uh, definitive. And it's um, there's a lot of tells that, you know, a lot of people don't realize. And we're very lucky to um, feel confident that we can. Hey, oh, the other part is, um, which I, you know, we're going to have a guarantee of uh, the item being genuine. Uh, it should be on the 2.0 website. So it's important that people feel confident if we're going to, you know, talk the talk, we got to walk the walk. So right. Um, for sure. Yeah. No, it's really important that if, if someone's spending money on one of these that, and it has our logo on it, we can't just be like, well, shucks, you know? Right. So, exactly. You know? Um, but yeah, no, it's, um, we're very lucky to, um, again, learn from these other cool, cool. So let's see the last thing I wanted to ask you, Oh, what about autographs? Do you guys, do any 
Autographs are tough. We will put that it's signed on the back if it, if there's a COA that we find representable. Um, you know, if it's JSA, PSA, Becca, or such. Um, we will be doing in-house signings where we have someone do a signing in-house and we say, hey, you know, up till this date, send in, who knows, like Ron Perlman, who knows what it, who it will be. But And um, we are setting up some signings in the future so we can do in-house signings so you can send your tapes of that actor or actress or director and we'll do the signing in-house and we'll probably do an interview and such so you don't just have to take our word on it. Um, you know, so it'll be fun. You know, again, a lot of this is about fun. You know, um, this is just the beginning of a very a lifetime mission of trying to bring more fun um, into graded collectibles. Because myself, I've noticed. I mean, all, a lot of the companies they make a product that finally is good enough and they're making money, but then they they stop. That's it. They're just like, this is all we're giving you, and we want to be a company that gives more than we you know, at least tries to give more than we take. And that's the goal of doing fun stuff that sometimes not the most financially beneficial thing, but it's best for the client. Um, and that even goes with doing the different sizes. Like if we do drawer box, that's not a very, like how many sealed drawer boxes is there? A hundred, but the blister is going to cost us 10 to $15,000. It's a crazy amount, but we're doing it because that's just best served for the community. And that's important for us is like that we, hopefully within about a year time, do every different size. And um, again, like the, you know, the smart, I won't say smart move, but financially beneficial move would just do slipcase, you know, <laughs> but, you know, we're going to do all the other ones, not because it's, uh, you know, the smartest financial thing, but it's best for clients. So they don't have to think, what am I, you know, which ones do they take? We, we hate that's the case right now. We tried not to make it, but we didn't realize sometimes to make these molds. Um, and we do it domestically with the blisters, it sometimes takes 12, 16 weeks. We've had projects that we're quoted seven weeks that take, we're at 30 weeks next week and we're still not done with. So, um, you know, music's something we're launching um, this year. And, you know, some of the quotes that we were given, we're still waiting on. And, you know, you should see our announcements with music, with cassettes and CDs in the first quarter, at least when those debut, you know. So whenever we release stuff, we're working six months or a year ahead and just everything takes time. So the thing is, there's always fun coming out of rewind. You know, there's always hard things, hard at work that, you know, there's always more going to be given in time, you know, and there's um, some stuff this next week we're going to be dropping. And uh, we mentioned how we're doing 360 degree gifts of some people's items and giving it to them just for free because we think it's cool because we can. And uh, stuff like that is like ways that we're trying to work now for you know the future of trying to make collectibles better you know and no other company does stuff like that and we want to do that just because we can if you have this guy i'm in just get the signature <laughs> give me christian bale over there yeah, i love christian Bale. i just saw that one on netflix uh what's get that batman called? get a batman begin sign and then we get this one signed by, by christian bale I'm, i will I'm try it for you pablo for you pablo i will try i wasn't going to try christian bale <laughs> I was gonna try hit the Heath Ledger. No, um, Toby Maguire, Heath Ledger. Well, Toby Toby Maguire will be great. Quentin Tarantino. We need local guys here. They they all live here in L.A. Well, that's what I was gonna say. We're out in L.A., Pablo. You know where we're at. We're we're about you know twenty five miles outside of Hollywood, and we have a great location to do these signings. So Absolutely. you know, it's been a mission of ours to bring a lot of fun to VHS collectors. You know, make it more fun. Make it. I think a lot of actors would love to see their first film side, you know. Thing. Absolutely, yeah. In, like, what? Mm -hmm. Sorry, Dan, to interrupt. No. One quick question before I forget: like, are you gonna have like like CGC? Like, you're gonna have color label, like blue label versus yellow on CGC? Are you guys gonna have that or no? Not to my knowledge. There's something we're working on. Um, not for VHS. Um, we're, we're, you know, open will be on the same color, but it'll distinctly say right now we're, you know, we're working on a different label for open box, but it'll still be this color. Um, yeah, we don't do the the different color uh, schemes because I, I think, I don't know, I'm not a big fan of it. I'm not trying to be negative or such. But Personally, personally, yeah. I like it because, mm -hmm. again, when you see a CGC and Carter can, can tell too, like when you see a yellow CGC, you know you're getting something special mm. versus the blue. I, I, would, I would agree Green, with purple, that. Green, purple, Yellow. I stay away. I yeah, would you, say that the, uh, <laughs> you stay the away base from the color, 
that's different that indicates that something's different about it um, isn't a bad idea. But I didn't like the the VHS DNA rainbow. I, I didn't like that. I feel like it's too colorful and distracts from the art of the box. So, so no Pablo, um, I, so one thing I will say, when we do signatures, there will be a different color involved okay, in how good. we do that's it good. all. I so like that. what I thought you meant just in total, like, hey, this, you know, um, we are trying to make our other, what can I say without getting myself in trouble? I get yelled at on Monday. Um, we're trying to make our other verticals be very distinctly different um, and not have exactly the same label. But we're trying to figure out what's the best way to go about it. I completely um, agree if something has, like, mold it should be green or something like that. You know, like, you know, I think I'm very much about if you look at an item and say if it has a, a feature that's very important, you should be able to see it immediately from the front label. Um, yeah. And that that's really important to me. And that's why, you know, with um, the beta, you know, that was really important. I remember telling a few people that uh, we're friends with, Pablo, that I'm like, hey, I'm going to do that. And they, there was a little bit of resistance because it's like, well, you're going to make beta not as cool. I'm like, no, no, trust me. Like, we're going to market that it's just so people can recognize, you know, this is the beta up there and I grabbed the wrong tape, which, um, you know, and VHS is just the gray. So like right away, you don't have to think twice. You just know. Um, and open tapes are going to be the same way too. You're going to instantly see it's an open tape because some of um, our peers, you don't know when it's, it's an open box from sealed that easily. And we find that very unfortunate because I know in video games, like I've had people go, Hey, this looks like a great deal. I'm like, well, it's not sealed. They're like, how do you tell? And I have to like point it out to them. And that's really unfortunate because you want them to be able to make a quick um, decision, especially, you know, you're buying on an auction or such. You, you don't have a lot of time or you don't want to look at the back label, you know. So, you know, it's important for us that it's really quick that you know what, what you're looking at. So just a personal preference, do you, I know I, I saw on you guys' website that you do do um, the uh, sticker removal and the cleaning mm. of tapes and stuff, so yeah. that's cool. But I know there are certain stickers, which Pablo reminded me when he showed that uh, the uh, VHS DNA graded one, that it had uh, the media sticker on it. Pablo, can we see that one again? The, uh, the VHS DNA graded one oh. with the green sticker on it? So, like, maybe you guys could put it as a part of your website or something later, but one thing that always gets me is if I'm submitting something for grading, do I want the sticker removed or not? And in this case, I feel like those stickers, people usually leave them on, but, you know, other stickers, they take them off. So I'm like, what stickers are like, this is authentic, it's from the time, and, like, other stickers are like, no, this is just to, you know, add it on later, you know what I mean? Like... <laughs> yeah, the sticker you know, sucks, man. I want to remove that. It's just bothering mm -hmm. me. It's just right in the middle of the word. We we never, I can't say, you know, I'm not saying there'll never be a mistake, but there hasn't been, but we never remove manufacturing uh, stickers, which is typically what was put on the manufacturer level. You know, uh, the five-star collection, re suggested retail is typically a manufacturer sticker. Now, um, when it's a retail sticker, uh, what a store put on and their sticker removal, that's what we remove. And if there's ever one in doubt, we'll reach out to the buyer. You know, if they put sticker removal and there's two stickers, I mean, we will never remove um, manufacturing stickers unless we're very much properly told so. Because a lot of times it, it tells you exactly the year and such. And we think it's part of the tape when the manufacturer does that. Now the price stickers are something like, hey, you know, Great price, four ninety nine. You know, um, those are typically retail stickers, in which we remove. A lot of times, they're paper stickers, um, or those darn foil stickers, or the security bars. Uh, we don't mess with foil um, because a lot of times we've realized re removing those it ends up looking even worse than before. Um, just there's nothing much you can do about that. Um, also, the security bars um, currently we're not removing. It's not that we can't. It's sometimes that stuff takes a very long time, and then you end up sometimes you can't prevent from ripping underneath those and um yeah we want to be we want to provide a service that is uh accurate and always efficient mm -hmm. i love removing stickers i gotta say oh, me man. tracy in the office as well uh me <laughs> and tracy sit there we, it's a lot of fun we just it's probably like the most like Zen time of the day is like no. I feel like that would make me panic. I'd be listen. like sitting there with gloves on, like goggles, hey, like we, we, performing we surgery. 
well it is like surgery like you it's funny because we'll have two people at one time like one holds up one side and one's with a q-tip going underneath it it's it's fun uh, to me i'm weird that that's just fun to me so it, oh it is like God. surgery i'm like scalpel you know yeah, like, it's so stressful <laughs> do you have anything carter do you have any tapes there to show with um some... what do i got around me i got some i got some just random stuff what's your favorite videos? vhs like out of your collection Ooh. the halloween think... meta Yo, that that's cool for the open box. I think my favorite one that I found in the wild was a Raging Bull ba um, Magnetic, just because it's rare. Ooh, yeah. And I'm a De Niro fan, so um, what else I got around here? I like. Uh, I'm a video game person, so The Wizard. I mean, nothing too expensive, but it's yeah. Cool. I like the tapes that have the crossover. You know, like they relate to a video game or a comic book. I I think those are really interesting for the collectibles market. Well, it's funny, this movie, you know, it came out when I was, what was it, four years old? And there was, it's funny, this movie had a scene in it. I couldn't remember what movie it was. I'm like, I remember a movie where they're in the desert with the dinosaur park and it ended up being that movie many years later. So it's one of those like childhood memories and you can't remember yeah. what movie and it was The Wizard for me. So, um, you know, there's, I've, it's funny, as, as much as I didn't collect leading up to, you know, starting the company, I loved movies um, my whole life. And like we had me and my brother shared a room. He had like 700 DVDs and I watched nearly every single one of them. I worked at Blockbuster and all this other stuff. Do I have any knowledge from those days? Fuck no, I don't. But, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to pretend, I, you know, but the important thing to me was that, you know, I've always enjoyed movies and it's been a, a mainstay of my enjoyment of pop culture. And, you know, hopefully we can, um, you know, help people with their collections and uh, help preserve them and really help people just get the knowledge of, you know, why these are special, you know, why, why we think they're special. Um, you know, I think it'll be a lot of fun. So right now, this will be the last question I'll ask you. Then I'll let the guys ask you whatever they want to do for our little bit of time left. But you guys do VHS and beta. And you said that in the future you want to do music cassettes. But what do you think about things like uh, vinyl records or laser discs or, you know, the bigger, flatter things? What mm -hmm. do you think about you guys will ever do that? or? Um, we're going to be doing cassettes and, and CDs come you know, we're again waiting on timeline. We're guessing between the first and second quarter, we are launching um, those verticals. Um, when it comes to, I call them 12 by 12s. Um, let's, let's just say uh, next time I'll come back on here. We'll talk. Not about out of things. the realm of possibilities. Yeah, let's, let's, let's wait. I, I'm, I'm getting myself in trouble, but <laughs> okay, okay, I, I'm, I'm sure sorry. it's damn obvious at this point, but I, mm. I've collected vinyl, um, started collecting vinyl like 10 years ago. Um, music's a very other big part of my life. I interned at a I had a punk website when I was 15. I interned at a record label. I thought I was going to work in music my whole life, and I ended up doing some stuff in music. So music's very dear to me. Uh, vinyl is is really cool, and um, you know, laser discs. I know a lot of people have been enjoying them, and uh, you know, we got to take a look at laser discs and such. But uh, 12 by 12 format's really cool, and the artwork of it is truly amazing. It's just the case are so big and it's expensive. Uh, mm. I think to put the, like a big vinyl laser disc in the, it's acrylic case or so that costs a lot of money, you know. We'll see, right? Like, uh, <laughs> um, you know, I don't want to give away too much, but uh, you know, um, we're working on stuff. Like I said, we're always working for the future, and it's not that it might seem like oh, they're opening up all these verticals. Really, it's just um, you know we are very front end, very heavy on getting to the markets we really want to get to. Um, but we're all about when we're in them, we're in it for the long haul and trying to make those ones better. So it's not like after, after movies and, and, mu and music, there's nothing on the schedule right now of and while we have plans for the next literally up to three years, none of it's about opening other verticals. So it's very important that we, we don't want to be a master of none. Like, Oh, we just create everything. No, that's never, that's never the plan. We never like going into a market that we, don't feel we're adding value to that community. There's not a void. Like when I saw VHS, great of VHS at least, um, I thought there was a void for a company like what we're doing here. And that was the only reason to really, for me to pursue it and, you know, put my money where my mouth was that we can do it. We thought we could do 
better in some areas where our competition wasn't, you know. And right. I mean, a lot of these other companies do like sports cards and comic books, and that is their thing. So it's cool that you guys, your main focus is, you know, VHS, beta, things like that. I mean, that's exactly. Cool. And that I, you know, I come from the, I come from video games, and I'm very well, you know, I'm very, I'm top notch with video game authentication and such. But we, we have no. Right now, there's two great companies, CGC and WADA, doing it. And you know what? I have no thing of getting in a market where we can't add a positive to those. And um, to me, I really love these markets where I feel they've been ignored by the bigger companies. And we look to do it right. And we be, we plan on being that bigger company, that we have a guarantee. We have a case that we stand behind. And truly that we want this to be in people's hands to collect for years to come because um, again, we, you know, we really enjoy it. I mean, that's, it's the passion, the, the, the office, the people that work with us, the people around the company, you know, it's all about being positive in the community. And the last thing you ever hear out of any of us is, you know, Hey, we just want to make money. <laughs> like, well, obviously it has to be, you know, a successful business, but the goal is to, you know, really, um, keep pushing forward and keep, on uh, keep on innovating and learning, you know, the knowledge is, Without the knowledge, you know, it's nothing. And without the reputation of grading company, you're nothing. So we don't forget that every day. And we kind of look at ways to, once you get your first package from Rewind, there's special gifts and stuff we do that are just not been done in collectibles. And that's important to me. Even the box, I don't have one here. We have a, when you order a individual tape, we made a special box that costs us a few bucks each. Not a great business decision, but it's the best experience we could think of for someone getting their first tape. It's a specific mailing box that opens up beautifully, has the tape sitting in the middle. And we designed that not because it was a great business decision, but because we wanted people that they took their time to just, you know, did one tape. That That's important for us to, they have the best possible experience. Yeah, you guys seem like you definitely have an appreciation for it from a collector's standpoint. And um yeah, just just super genuine. I, I'll tell you guys that before we started recording, I was like, hey, can I uh, run these questions by you before we like go on to record? And he was like, no, no, just do it live. I will answer anything. And I was like, wow, <laughs> that's really fucking cool. Awesome. But yeah, Carter, we, we're, Pablo, we're did, you, did you have anything you wanted to ask him before we get off here? No, the again, the grading scale. So you guys are doing that, the, the CGC model, like uh, 1L, 2O. 80, yeah. What is that thing with the little stars? I mean, that is a so little different. We, right? we have a 10 point system, it's very similar to CGC, where it's 10, 9.8, 9.6, 9.0. Know, so I can't think 9, 8, 9, 6, 9, 4, 9, 2, 9. Then it goes 8, 5, 8, what? But the stars is something different. This is part of that innovation that I think there's a better way because, and again, I, I actually like the comic book grading scale, but I look at it, I'm like, what is an A? Well, you have to explain it to someone. You're like, well, an A++ is this. Well, what we did is a five-star system. And basically, it's out of five stars and it's by halves. You could get a five-star, a four-and-a-half star, a four-star, three-and-a-half star, three. And that makes it so it's pretty right away you get it. As someone not in the hobby, you could be like, I get what a five out of five is. Like, you don't have to explain that to me. So um, we do a five-star, um, five stars, you know, and that's a, very much a play on, you know, movie reviews and such. And um, five stars, I, I can explain real quick. Five stars is pretty much a nearly perfect uh, seal. You know, this is something that probably came out, never hit the retail floor, has close to almost nothing wrong with it. Um, a four and a half is, hey, this this is beautiful. It has no major damage, no, for the most part, no corner pokes. I believe it might be able to have one, but I got to look at our sheet. Um, four has its, like, minor damage. By three and a half, you have some kind of significant damage. And um, you know, I always look at if it has something like a dime of plastic missing, it's going to fall in that three and a half range. And real quick, because it's it's really important to mention these is our grading scale is not is not made up. Is saying if you have a drill hole, right, the max grade you can get is eight and a half and three and a half stars, and that's it. Like, there's no. You know, that is the top grade, and I like saying that out loud because I know me when trying to get stuff graded. I like to know what stuff means and you should be able to understand your grading, you know, our grading scale to a certain degree. Now we, we can't go over each part and be like, this is the exact calculation, but you know um, a lot of it is, you know, there's a lot of things we'll be putting publicly that you could understand. Hey, if it has a dime of plastic missing, 
it's a three and a half star. And that's, I've heard complaints well, about that from other grading companies that people are like, yeah, we have no idea what the qualifications <laughs> are. Like, we just send it off and wait for it to come back. But I'm so glad we've asked so many people on the show. What are the drill holes? What is that? Why are they there? What do they mean? You know, this is funny because I actually, with good friends of mine that are very well known in this community, I've had these conversations and a lot of people had some um, interesting theories. And what I personally believe, and this is, again, we don't have a hundred percent fact, but I believe they're um, either promo or overstock. Now, a lot of people don't realize overstock um, distributors would make certain deals with um, retail stores and say, "Hey, if you can't sell these, we'll buy them back." And that happened. I worked at a, a record label when I was younger, and that happens. You know, you get back a box of stuff from the store, and they'll they'll drill a hole in them. You know, and uh, of course, this is different. This is beta, and I look at beta probably in the second half of the eighties or, you know, that time period. And a lot of an interesting part about beta, you don't notice it on certain time errors either. And I think that's because uh, two of the companies, I, this is not, this is all just hearsay. So please, this is one person's opinion. Um, I think there was some deals uh, for overstock and when stuff didn't sell, they sent it back and they told them you had to drill hole it to get that credit. So they drill hold them. And that's my oh, assumption. Man. I think it could be promotional as well. But that's the most logical thing to me. Um, and I hope that we find out in time, right? That's it's a fun thing to look at. I don't see that with the with the VHS. Like have you seen those Carter or Maya with the never. VHS? No. Never no, with but I VHS. Have, I have seen on some VHS. Um, oh, okay. The slash. It, it yeah, the slash. That's more that's more promotional usually for you see that in all different medias, especially CDs, cassettes, um, even vinyl. Um very typically, if a record company is giving out a thing, they I used to get 10 to 15 CDs a week, and they would always have some kind of a way of telling that this was a freebie. Why they do that is because if you go to a store and try to trade it in, they, they usually are not supposed to accept that. The reason being is they're giving this out for free, right? The last thing they want you to do is go, here, here's a store that can compete against the new copy that we want you to sell. So... Um, you know, that's why, and the theory why I mentioned the beta different than the VHS, because beta and VHS were in a competition. If you had to sell a lot of beta, you're probably making some guarantees that didn't fall and fell through and you got that stock back. And that's where VHS went out and the inventory would stay on the floor. Uh, again, just a theory. Um, I know in media, you'll notice um, saw cuts um, on CDs. You'll notice uh, drill holes. You'll notice scratch barcodes. Those a lot of times are... Um, it's either promotional or overstock like that. I know like, but with betas, it's more of a guess because it's definitely different with where it's done. And it sometimes goes into the tape. I have heard of um, a friend of mine was, we we're talking about this last week has heard of a VHS, but it's not like beta where it's like quite common, but doesn't that make sense um, of why we see these ones being sealed? Because they're the ones that, didn't sell right so right um they lasted they stayed in they stayed out there um but that's again a theory and i love for someone that's watching if you have more information please tell maya tell 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 you know tell these great people that i was wrong and please explain it to us <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's you to know. let them breathe <laughs> yeah oh god i know and, you know i've had i've had disagreements about that i i truly think it was overstock or promotional and that makes uh, the most sense to me i think yeah i mean being i literally remember getting i was at a record company in hollywood called side one dummy i was working as a free intern that was the worst thing but we got a box <laughs> of like from canada overstock and it, you know that pops in my head when when we talk about this because i remember getting that box in like what is this and you know they're all drill hold and um, yeah, it's interesting nonetheless. And I, that's the type of knowledge we'll learn in time together. Not me, not you guys, but as a community, you know, and that's what's important is, you know, hopefully we can get enough knowledge out there that the next people who come into these hobbies um, can build on that. Yeah, just for me, as my final thing to say, I think it's going to be exciting for the market when I see, and I come in from comic books and I like to collect VHS with you know, Spider-Man, Batman, Captain America, the X-Men, you know, even the Deadpool, you know, that it was that gimmick in 2016. It's fun. You know, I like the horror stuff. You know, it's, it's like a beautiful piece of art. And I think your cases, they look tremendous. I, I, 
I'm gonna send you some stuff then, you know, and, and give you guys a try. I mean, again, right now you got three other companies ahead of you, but uh, I think again, there is so many good stuff out there to get graded. And and I guess each each competition, like I said, competition brings the best out of you and trying to improve and do better. So exactly. ultimately that's the case, you know, and at the end of the day, it's is for the for the for the customer to get the best. You know, like Carter was saying, the information. You know, like I, I got this obscure stuff. I mean, and and again, the labels are gonna be better. And again, the population report, which is ultimately the key of like in comic books, you know how many action comics ones in general are out there. The same with Amazing Fantasy 15 or Hulk 181. So in the future, you're gonna know how many Captain Americans from 1990 are out there. You know, stuff like that. Yeah, these are, you know VHS is so early uh, yeah. in the of a collectible market in a way that um, it'll be years of discovery of great the be, the biggest collections uh, what we'd call in pe- as a pedigree a pedigree typically oh it's a lot of those the, yeah. yeah for people that don't know pedigree is a single source uh, discovery usually that's been in one place for a very long time um, I, I think there's gonna be some great pedigrees so some great oh, yeah, uh, yeah. historic lot, movies yeah. that'll come yeah. out. You know, we haven't really seen case packs of, you know, a whole lot of case packs in VHS. And I think they're out there, especially out here in L.A., where a lot of times, what, how did these survive? That, that's the funny thing is, like, we talk about these tapes that are were $90 when they came out. Like, I'm sorry, I don't know if I'm going to class, but it's it's, F, it's effing crazy that someone bought that and didn't use it. Oh, it's cool. Now, I, have a, I have a mouth like a sailor, so I, I haven't yeah. been thrown mm-hmm. off yet. So so. I'm, I'm really <laughs> trying to be good here. Um, I usually use too many bad words. But- Fudge! Sorry, Carter. <laughs> but you know the thing is, like these things were ninety dollars when they came out. You know, typically early eighties. It's like, why did they survive? A lot of times they were given to people for free that were in the studios. You know, it wasn't someone that spent ninety bucks. It's like I'm just not going to use it. You know, so I always look that there is some great pedigrees and discoveries to be found. That's the fun of this. Is that it's the beginning and not the end. So. Um, we look forward to helping people on that journey, and uh, we look forward to, yeah, I mean, feel free to reach out anytime to myself. Or we have a phone number at Rewind. We're open Monday through Friday. We don't let people walk in the room because if we have your stuff in there, I'm sure you wouldn't want people to walk in that room. But we do meet up in the lobby. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a party in there. Um, no, we do meet up in the lobby to take tapes. So we have had drop-offs that are great. Um, you this see is videos- our Instagram. If you guys yeah, want to follow it. We've done two lives. Oh, we, um, we're going to be doing a live every Wednesday. Um, I believe it's 1 Pacific, 4 Eastern, to talk about the tapes that came in, talk about knowledge and share. Um, wow, do some awesome. uh, show and tell, you know. Um, and please don't hesitate to reach out and tell us what you want to see. Uh, second half of the year, we'll be doing conventions. Um, I'm personally going to try to meet up with Pablo this Sunday for a little one. And uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to talk to Callum and try to see if uh, he wants to join. Uh, he's Callum's uh, head of the office. Um, he is great. You guys will get to know him. He's uh, yes, he does have an accent. Uh, shocker! Uh, I always well, love maybe him. I, maybe I'll give you this one to get graded. Oh, the giant well, I'm so rock. excited! I am so excited to see what you guys have in store. Um, but with that, I'm gonna roll our outro. But Bye. thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We thank hope you to guys. see you again.